the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments. It's not to sort of deter conflict. We're going to invade countries. And, I, I, you know, my mind was spinning. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down. Now, did anybody ever tell you that? Was there a national dialogue on this? Did senators and congressmen stand up and denounce this plan? Was there a full-fledged American debate on it? Absolutely not. And there still isn't. I was leaving the Pentagon, and an officer from the Joint Staff called me into his office and said, I, I want you to know, he said, sir, we're going to attack Iraq. And I said, why? He said, we don't know. He said, uh, I said, well, did they tie Saddam to 9-11? He said, uh, no. And then I came back to the Pentagon about six weeks later. I saw the same officer. I said, why, uh, why haven't we attacked Iraq? We still going to attack Iraq? He said, oh, sir. He says, it's worse than that. He said, um, he pulled up a piece of paper off his desk. He said, I just got this memo from the Secretary of Defense's office. It says we're going to attack and destroy the governments in, in seven countries in five years. We're going to start with Iraq, and then we're going to move to Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. It was a pretty stunning thing. You mean the purpose of the military is to, to, to start wars and change governments? It's not to sort of deter conflict? We're going to invade countries? And, I, I, you know, my mind was spinning. And uh, I put that aside. It was like a nugget that you hold on to. This country was taken over by a group of people with a policy coup. Wolfowitz and Cheney and Rumsfeld and... You could name a half dozen other collaborators from the Project for a New American Century. They wanted us to destabilize the Middle East, turn it upside down, make it under our control. In their defining document, written in September of 2000, a full year before 9-11, they acknowledged that the process of transformation, even if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one. Absent, in their own chilling words, some catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. One year later, that event would arrive. A 76-page white paper circulating for a year and arguing for an aggressive U.S. foreign policy suddenly gained new relevance. In the blueprint, it says the process of transformation is likely to be a long one, absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. Was 9-11 your Pearl Harbor? I think it was the country's Pearl Harbor. So, what happened? Well, September 11th happened, obviously, and George W. Bush had to rethink. But for many of those around Bush, there was no rethink. There didn't have to be. Long before September 11th, a small, influential group of neoconservatives here in Washington had wanted to see the United States transformed into a sort of benevolent ruler, unchallenged, astride the world. And long before George W. Bush was elected, they sat down and they wrote down a manifesto. The document was effectively a charter of the Project for a New American Century, a neoconservative think tank in Washington. The founding members included Donald Rumsfeld, Dick Cheney, uh, Wolfowitz, Paul Wolfowitz of the Defense Department, uh, Richard Pearl, head of the uh, Defense Advisory Board, um, Louis Libby, Cheney's chief of staff, uh, uh, John Bolton, Under Secretary of State for uh, Arms Control, uh, Ellie Cohen, uh, who's on the Defense Policy Board. Much of what these men wanted is coming true. They urged that the U.S. abandon the anti-ballistic missile treaty. It has. They wanted establishment of more permanent U.S. military bases abroad. That is happening in the Philippines and in Georgia and will likely happen in Iraq. They urged regime change as a goal of foreign wars, not just in Iraq. They wanted the U.S. as a global constabulary, their word, unburdened by the U.N. or world opinion, preventing any challenge to U.S. dominance. But, they wrote, a year before September 11th, such aspirations are unlikely to be realized without a catastrophic and catalyzing event, like a new Pearl Harbor. This is being seen on Capitol Hill as another Pearl Harbor. Some senators have described this as a second Pearl Harbor. This will go down as a kind of Pearl Harbor of terrorism. In the long view of history, it may be that 
September 11th, 2001, will be remembered as the day America's new century began. He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense's office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. If you were Iran, you'd probably believe that you were mostly already at war with the United States anyway, since we've asserted that their government needs regime change. So, uh, and we've asked Congress to appropriate $75 million to do it, and we are supporting terrorist groups, apparently, who are infiltrating and blowing up things inside Iraq, Iran. And if we're not doing it, let's put it this way, we're probably cognizant of it and encouraging it. So, it's not surprising that we're moving to a point of confrontation and crisis with Iran. Seeing it come true, it's, uh, it's unfolding. What does that say to the larger extent of everything? Um, it says that the United States needs to be a strong force for peace and justice, global cooperation in the world. Do you have anything else you want to say about that talk or any information you came across? And how do you feel Obama's handling Syria right now? The project for the new American century. Written a year before 9-11, it's supported by key members of the current Bush administration. It says if we are going to transform America into tomorrow's dominant force, that's their phrase, then it's going to be a long process unless there is a catastrophic and catalyzing event, dash like Pearl Harbor.